Hello Anchor fans, it's Steve with SV Panopay. We're back out in the water, this time with a Rockna 33. This is an anchor that was purchased brand new. It's never been in the water. Uh, I believe it was purchased in 2015. Uh, it, it is only 33 pounds, so it's going to be slightly less weight than the typical size that I've been testing, which is 45 pounds. But we did pass, test a 34 pound Super Sarka anchor, and it did just fine. Uh, so here we are in the initial set. Uh, we are in 26 feet of water with my 4 foot bow roller and 105 feet of road. Uh, that gives us 3.5 to 1 scope. This initial back down was at 2 knots and the anchor set right away within an anchor length or 2. Here's the boat passing overhead at 3.5 knots to simulate my wind or current reversal. We see the anchor has rotated but became disengaged with the seabed. I uh, let the, the anchor go quite a while. Uh, the boat speed was maybe down to about 2 knots at this point. We could feel large lurches through the boat as the anchor was trying to set and the boat the anchor only reset after boat speed was slowed to below one knot so here the boats turned around and on each of these resets I've got the boat uh, in reverse with 3000 rpm and I held it for 10 or 20 seconds to ensure that the anchors actually set so there's the chain whizzing by on the second reset test and we've got some fouling here. Also, the turbidity I'm finding here in the summertime months is, is pretty high. There seems to be just lots of material, organic material, suspended in the substrate at all times, and it's making it uh, difficult for us to see. So that second set, it was the same story, and same with the third here. The, the anchor releases each time, uh, drags considerably, and only resets after boat speed is allowed to decay. We can see the anchor roll bar there, and the anchor is uh, at least partially on its side during these drags. Here's the fourth reset. Same story, the anchor drags. Uh, I'm not going real fast. Uh, Again, I haven't, this is my fir the, the first test of the anchor, so at this point I don't know if the anchor has fouled with a foreign object or not, but my, my presumption was that it's, like the Manson Supreme, is that when this anchor gets fouled with seabed, uh, it, it just has trouble, has trouble resetting, and there it eventually does, but only after boat speed is decayed. Here's the fifth and final reset of this series. And once again, anchor releases and drags considerably. There's a possible set after the boat was allowed to decay its speed. And then I back down again with about 3000 RPM. And even from a zero speed, uh, you know, so there's ample opportunity for this anchor to set to, to dig in. Uh, it couldn't. It's it's fouled, and uh, again, like the Manson Supreme, it sort of has a Jekyll and Hyde nature. When these anchors are clean, they are absolutely perfect. They set immediately. They set hard, and they're completely reliable. However, if for whatever reason there is stuff attached to the fluke, and you'll see here in a minute what was attached. Um, it's its marginal performance. So here I've cut the engine power. You can see the anchor's lurching. Uh, the anchor's over on its side. I've got the motion stopped for you. And then it finally sets. I didn't power set this because I really wanted to see just what was on the fluke after after this last drag. So here I am, I'm, I'm going to retrieve the anchor and we'll get a good look and see what's going on. Uh, many people have surmised that roll bar anchors have a problem of, of seabed packing into the roll bar and causing this problem. I personally have not seen it in any of my testing of this or the Manson. I never see seabed packed into the roll bar. There we saw it attached to the tip somewhat. There's Kim, he's the guy that owns this anchor. He brought it up for me to test. So now we're going to do the exact same test, same place, same scope, but instead of doing 3.5 knot reversals, I'm going to slow things down and do 2 knot reversals. Give it a, just give it another shot, see what happens. By the way, this is my, we're within, within 
uh, dozens of feet of my normal test site, which consists of a sandy mud substrate. Here's the initial set. Again, it anchors clean. It performs perfectly. The boat was backing down two knots and brought it to an abrupt halt. Here's the first reset. Notice that the motion is slower. That's because we're only going two knots. And it was struggling and it was trying, but it's not setting. Going no faster than the initial set here. So cl clearly these anchors have a different characteristic or a different personality, so to speak, when they are, uh, you know, have seabed attached. So there the, the, I've cut the power and the anchor appeared to be set, but then after I turned the boat around and just pulled on it in reverse power, it moved again. So it's, it's, it's kind of struggling here. Here's the second reset. This was textbook. The anchor rotated, remained engaged in the seabed, and stopped the boat abruptly. And it holds solid at 3,000 RPM. Here's the third reset. Same thing. Anchor remained engaged, rotated, and stopped the boat. Fourth reset. Anchor rotates. remained engaged and stopped the boat. Fifth reset. Perfect. Sixth and final reset. Anchor rotates, releases, and drags. Now I didn't simulate this with many of the other anchors, this uh, two knot slow down. I did it with only the ones that had trouble at three and a half knots and um, there were four anchors that I've tested so far that had no trouble with any of these resets at either my three and a half to one scope or even at two and a half to one scope at high speed at three and a half knots. Uh, those four anchors were the Super Sarka, Sarka Excel, Spade, and the Mantis anchors. All four of those could handle these reset swings perfectly. Didn't matter if they flipped over, uh, released, or just rotated, they all stopped the boat. So here the anchor is dragging along very slowly and it's kind of lurching. It's really trying to set. We can feel it in the boat. It's pulling real hard, um, but once again it, it just won't bite in until you really, really slow things way down. And there it finally resets. Here's the anchor on retrieval. We'll get another look and see what kind of seabed attachment there is. Once again, I'm not seeing an impacted roll bar. Maybe a little bit there to the right, but for the most part, I see a completely covered fluke. Most of that washed away by the time I'd left it to the surface. So now we're going to do a final series of testing here uh, at 2.5 to 1 scope. And since this anchor was unable to handle uh, three and a half knot reversal tests, uh, I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm going to do my reversal test here at two knots. So I'm giving it, a, uh, giving it a break here and we'll see what happens. So this is the initial set. It's a clean anchor at 2.5 to 1 scope. That was a two knot back down. Perfect. Stop the boat just like it was attached to the seabed uh, with a 10,000 pound lump of lead. Um, Here's the initial reset, first reset, and it struggles. The anchor appeared to possibly be reset there, so I've got the boat turned around now, now in reverse with reverse power, and again, the anchor it's really struggling. It's it's fine at, at these short scopes when the anchor's clean, but once it gets fouled, uh, it just turns into a whole different anchor. And we saw just at the end there, the anchor rotated just about upright and then does reset. Here is my second and final reset attempt. You see the chain, it just hits the camera 
And now that's the chain clicking along the roll bar. I always like it when this happens here. We're going to get the, the, the infamous backflip. Only going two knots, so no need to slow the camera motion down. We can see it clearly. It's upside down for the initial part of this, but right away the anchor rotates to, uh, well, well onto its side, but mostly upright. But it just can't cope with it, and it drags a considerable distance. Note, I'm not going very fast there, and it, it only resets once things get really, really slow. So here is the retrieval. One last look at seabed attachment, and once again, we don't see uh, the roll bar really causing a large impacting of, of, of seabed, at least that we can tell once it's uh, during the retrieval. That's all for now. So long.